In this video, we're going to learn about pointers to functions in C. So pointers to functions are also called function pointers. And we'll go over what they are, how to use them, as well as some common useful use cases. So pointers store a memory address. And regular pointers in C will store a memory address for some data in the program. So a memory address for an array or a memory address for a variable. A function pointer is going to store the memory address for a function. So let's go over an example. We'll make a function here. We'll say void function int x. And this function is going to accept an int value as an argument. And the function will just print it out. We'll just say printf x colon percent d backslash n. And we'll output x. Now in main, we'll make a variable that's going to be a pointer to a function. So we'll say void star function pointer and then int like this. So the variable name is function pointer and it's a pointer. It's a pointer to a function that's going to have a void return value and that is going to accept a single int argument. We can then set function pointer to point to this function here. So we'll say function pointer is equal to and function. So and, just like with regular pointers, will give us the memory address of this function. And we're saying have function pointer store the memory address of this function. We can then use the function pointer to call the function. So we could say here, star function pointer, and then four. And what's going on here is we're using the star operator in a different way. Here it was used to declare the function pointer. Here it's being used to dereference the function pointer. And we're accessing the function and we're calling it with the argument four. And if we save and run this, we should get x colon four as output. So we can also have pointers to functions that return a value. So for example, we could say here double add double x double y and the add function is going to return x plus y and then down here we can make a pointer to this add function so here we'll say double star add pointer and then double comma double so this here would declare a variable called add pointer. It's going to be a pointer to a function that accepts two double arguments and returns a double value. We could assign the function memory address right here. And I could say and add. I could also just say add though. I don't actually need the and, and this will work okay. We could call the function too. So here we'll say double A is equal to 20, double B is equal to 30, and we'll say double result is equal to, and we'll call the function like this. We'll say add pointer A, B. And this is actually okay. There's no need to dereference the pointer. And we'll print out the result to verify that everything went okay. So percent F, backslash n for new line, and we'll put the result here. And if we save and run this, we should get a result of 50, and we do. We can also have arrays of pointers to functions. To do this, we'll make multiple functions that have the same return values and the same number and types of parameters. So we'll say int subtract int x int y, and this function will return x minus y. We'll say int multiply, int x, int y, and this function will return x times y. And then we'll say int divide, int x, int y, and this function will return x divided by y. We can make an array of pointers to these functions. So down here in the main function, we'll say int star array 
open bracket, close bracket. And then we'll have int, int. And this is declaring an array of pointers to functions that accept two int arguments and return an int value. And it's going to be called array. We can initialize the array right here. We'll say is equal to open squiggly bracket and we'll put in our function names. So subtract, multiply, and divide. Now we can call these functions using this array. So I could say int product is equal to star array at index one, three, and 15. And then we'll try to output the product. So we'll say product percent D backslash N, and then we'll put product here. And if we save this and run it, we should get product 45 and we do. And that's because array at index one is a pointer to that multiply function. That's going to multiply the arguments three and 15, and we get back the return value 45 that we store in a product there. Now, two of the more useful things we can do with pointers to functions is create functions that themselves return a pointer to a function. Or we can create functions that accept as an argument a pointer to a function. So let's go over examples of both of those ideas. We'll make a function that allows the user to decide between subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. And the function will return a pointer to either the subtract, multiply, or divide function that we can then use in our main function. So here we'll say int star select operation, which is actually the function itself. That's why we've got open bracket, close bracket there. And then we'll have int and int next. So the syntax here isn't super easy to read, but basically the function is called select operation. And what it's going to return is a pointer to a function that accepts two int arguments and returns an int value. So next we can actually ask the user for the function that they want to run, the operation they want to use. So we'll say int option is equal to zero, printf select an operation backslash n, and then we'll give them their options. We'll say subtract backslash n, multiply backslash n or divide backslash n and they'll prompt the user to enter a choice. And we use scanf to store what they enter into the option int variable there. And then we can check the option variable and return a pointer to one of those functions based on that. So here we'll say if option is equal to one, then return a pointer to the subtract function. If the option is equal to two, return a pointer to the multiply function. If the option is equal to three, return a pointer to the divide function. Otherwise, we're gonna return null in the case of an error. Now we can use this function in our main function. So we'll say here, int star operation, int int, and we'll call select operation. So here we're declaring a variable operation that's going to be a pointer to a function that accepts two int values as arguments and returns an int value. And we're going to assign the result of calling select operation to operation. And that's exactly what select operation returns. So next we can call the operation function. We can say printf answer percent D backslash N, and we'll call the operation function now with say 20 and five. So we can save and run this. And if we select the subtract operation with 20 and five, we'll get an answer of 15. If we select multiply, we get an answer of 100. If we select divide, 
we get an answer of four. So that's how we can return a pointer to a function in C. And that's one useful application of pointers to functions. Now let's try creating a function that accepts a function pointer as an argument. We'll actually include the stdbool.h library just so we can use the bool type and true and false values. And then down here, we'll make a function called isFreezing. And the goal of this function is to check whether it's freezing or not. But we don't know whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit that's being used as a unit for the temperature. So as an argument, the function is gonna accept a pointer to a function. We'll call the parameter freeze check. And we'll have int here. But the parameter freeze check is a pointer to a function that accepts an int as an argument and returns true or false, a bool value. We can then make multiple functions to check the temperature to see if it's freezing or not. So we'll say bool freeze underscore C. And this is gonna to check to see if it's freezing in Celsius. So we'll say int temperature, and if the temperature is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna return true. Otherwise, we're gonna return false. So freeze underscore C is gonna to check to see if it's freezing in Celsius. We'll make a freeze underscore F function to check to see if it's freezing in Fahrenheit. So with Fahrenheit, it's gonna be when the temperature is less than or equal to 32. So now we can pass to is freezing either a pointer to freeze underscore C or a pointer to freeze underscore F. And we can change the behavior of is freezing by virtue of the function we've passed into it. It'll either check whether it's freezing in Celsius or Fahrenheit, depending on the function. We call this type of function a callback function. It's a function that's gonna be called back later by this function here. It's gonna be used at some later point in the body of this function to do some work. Next, let's implement the isFreezing function itself. So we'll say int temperature is equal to zero. And then we'll prompt the user to enter the temperature. And we're gonna let them know whether it's freezing or not. So we'll say printf enter temperature and then we'll store what they enter into the temperature variable and then we'll use the freeze check function to check whether it's freezing or not so we'll say if freeze check with this temperature as an argument returns true then printf it's freezing backslash n Otherwise, printf, that it's not freezing. So we'll say it's not freezing, backslash n. And again, the important part is that this function here, freeze check, is gonna be different depending on which argument was provided to is freezing. We could be checking in Fahrenheit or we could be checking in Celsius. We're leaving it to this callback function to determine that. Let's try out is freezing now. First, we'll try it out with Celsius. So we'll say Celsius, throw on some new lines, and then we'll say is freezing, and we'll call it with freeze underscore C. And then we'll say is freezing, freeze underscore C. So we save this and run it. It says enter temperature. If we put a negative five, we get it's freezing. If we say five, we get it's not freezing. If we try it now with freeze underscore F, and we'll say Fahrenheit here now instead. So Fahrenheit, and we save and run it. Now if I try negative five, we get it's freezing. If I try five, we also get it's freezing. So we're getting a different result from the is freezing function. And the reason why we're getting that different result is because we're passing in a different callback function. 
a different pointer to a different function. So this ability to pass a pointer to a function as an argument to another function is really important in programming in general. For example, even the built-in quicksort function that comes with the C standard library depends on this. We actually provide a pointer to a function as an argument to quicksort to help carry out its work. Now with function pointers, we don't allocate space. So with regular pointers, we might allocate space for dynamically allocated memory on the heap using functions like malloc, calloc, and then free to free the dynamically allocated memory. With function pointers, we don't do that. Function pointers are pointers to instructions. They're not pointers to data. They're really a different kind of thing. We also don't do pointer arithmetic with function pointers. If we try that, we're gonna have a bad time. I'll just show you what I mean here. With a regular pointer, let's say we've got an array here with five values in it. One, two, three, four, five. We could make a pointer here. We'll say int star pointer is equal to int array at index two. So pointer is storing the memory address of the array at index two, which is gonna be that index there. So it's gonna have a pointer to that value three. We can use pointer arithmetic. So I could say pointer plus plus. What that's gonna do is move the pointer to a memory address over one integer in memory, which is gonna put it right here at index three and value four. So if we say printf, the dereference pointer, and we output the dereference pointer, we're gonna get the value four there. And we can use pointer arithmetic like this to work with memory. With function pointers, this won't work. We could try it, but we'll get a crash. So here we'll say void, and we'll say star function pointer int. And just like we did at the start of the video, we're gonna make function pointer point to our function, that first void function we made here. And then I'll try using pointer arithmetic. So I'll say function pointer plus plus. And then we'll try to call this function. So we'll say star function pointer with an argument of four. If I save this and try to run it, our program crashes and we have a really bad time. And that's because pointer arithmetic doesn't really make sense in the context of function pointers. They are pointers to not data, they are pointers to instructions. So incrementing the function pointer, for example, doesn't really make a lot of sense. So that's the basics of function pointers and how to use them and some use cases in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.